Bom dia. Que o Senhor Jesus seja glorificado. É um grande prazer estar aqui. Há muito tempo que a gente não passa aqui, mas graças a Deus estamos de volta com boas notícias de uma terra longíqua. Uh, good morning. May Jesus Christ be glorified. It's been a long time since we passed by this way. Uh, but thankfully we're back with good news from a far country. Amen. And without saying a whole lot more, I'd like to go ahead and get to our presentation. So if you need to dim the lights, you can go ahead and do so. The Bible says in Acts 14, 26 and 27, And thence sailed to Antioch, from whence they had been recommended to the grace of God for the work which they fulfilled. Here the Bible speaks of Paul and Barnabas, first missionaries we find in Scripture in Acts chapter 13, sent out by the, their local church in Antioch. The Bible says after they had gone out on that first missionary journey and come back, and when they were come and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them. And how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. That is exactly what I'd like to do this morning. We're the Shiraz family. My name is Matt. Let's see if this clicker will work. My wife is Jody. Our oldest is Peter. He was the only one with us at the time when we were here in 2005. Now, right before leaving uh, for the field in 2007, Heidi was born. Since we've been in Brazil, Emily has come along, Jonathan, and Joseph. The last three have Brazilian citizenship, and uh, they also have American citizenship, but because of their Brazilian citizenship, our family has permanent residency in the country of Brazil. We're sent by Faith Baptist Church in Fort Smith, Arkansas, as the pastor mentioned. My dad is the pastor there. We're also serving with Bible Baptist Mission, And for six years, we've been laboring to preach the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the precious people in Brazil. Y'all pray for me. I was afraid this was going to happen this morning. It's been a long time. I've been away nine months. And uh, 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 you learn that you fall in love with the people. Amen. And uh, a lot of people make the mistake of thinking that in Brazil we speak Spanish. We don't. We are the only country in South America that speaks Portuguese. Um, thus, they spell their country's name not with a Z but with an S because uh, an S between two vowels in Portuguese makes this, the Z sound, Brazil. It is the fifth largest country in the world, the largest country in South America. And here's one for you. Brazil is larger than the continental United States. Take away Alaska, Hawaii, Brazil is larger. Sadly, Brazil is also the largest Catholic country in the world. The people of Brazil worship the Virgin Mary, or as they call her, Nossa Senhora, Our Lady. Of the 26 states in Brazil, God has called us to the field of Minas Gerais. It means General Minerals, a very rich state. It's one of the second, it is the second uh, largest state as far as population is concerned in Brazil. It's not the largest in land mass, but it is a very large state. It's 230,000 uh, square miles. Texas is 263,000 square miles. To give you an idea in comparison there, it has 20 million souls in it, and it is considered by the Brazilian people to be the most Catholic state. By that, they mean the traditional dedicated Catholics are from Minas. <coughs> We are in the south in the city of Pozo Alegre, in a little town uh, uh, called uh, Happy Rest. That's what Pozo Alegre means. It's a very beautiful area, mountainous, hilly, very green, surrounded by agriculture, have a lot of cowboys, a special breed of horse there called the Mangalarga Marchador. They're very proud of their horse. Uh, cattle, Coffee. The city itself, I said it's small because uh, it's near a city of a million people, and then there's another city about five hours from us with six million, another city three and a half hours from us with 22 million. So in comparison, it's small, 130,000 souls, most of whom are in bondage to the Roman Catholic Church. Remember, these are the dedicated Catholics. Now, what happened was, when I went to Brazil originally, I, was, I intended to go to Campinas, which is three hours from us. It's a city of a million people. I had a missionary contact that I knew there. 
He calls me up two months before I leave, and he says, hey, Brother Matt, he said, I've been thinking. He said, I don't think you should come help me. I said, okay. He said, uh, he said you know, brother, you're a redneck. I said, okay. Well, amen. He said, uh, he said, yeah, you ought to go to Pozo Lagu. He said, it's smaller. You'll fit in better. Better. He said, I have a son-in-law, a uh, Brazilian pastor that just started a bit. He's got a work going over there, and you need to go help him. Went over to help him. That's what I did. I said, okay. I went to Pozo Lagu at a church of about 20 people. Had a building already. It was in rough shape, and they had a building. It was there six months, and uh, Brother, Brother Fabio looked at me, the pastor, and he said, uh, he actually had me over to his house to eat. Uh, we sat down, and after the meal, he said, all right, now I'm going to tell you why I had you over. And I thought, I thought it was just a half of food. I, I, I've only been there six months now. Uh, I was preaching. I'd already started preaching on my own. I got to really good as far as the language can support that. Is concerned, but anyway, he looked at me. He said, "I'm going. I'm moving to the states." Remember, he's married to the missionary's daughter. And I said, "Okay." I said, "Well, what are we going to do the church?" He said, "You're going to take over." I said, "You got to be kidding me!" I mean, I'm preaching on my own, but I'm making all kinds of uh, I'm making all kinds of mistakes. And he looked at me. He said, "Man, you make good gestures." He said, "When you when you don't know a word, just keep doing all this. You're doing great." <laughs> so in 2008. We ended up with 20 people and a building. You get anything about you to be with you. And uh, after two, about, well, I'll say about more than two weeks, about a month, we had 10 people. So my preaching had run off half the congregation. I wasn't trying to run anybody off. But then the Lord began to move. And since then, it's 2013, we have a membership of 100 people. We've remodeled that same building. This is the same building. It's larger now, extended it. And made it look pretty on the outside. God gave us two builders. We remodeled that entire building. And we changed the church name to Iglesia Bautista Bíblica de Esperanza, Hope Bible Baptist Church. And the reason for that was because there had been an American missionary there prior to me that I didn't know about who started Bible Baptist Church, Iglesia Bautista Bíblica, in the same town. And today it's a charismatic mess. So we didn't want to be identified with them, so we changed the church name a little bit. In the inside, today it looks very beautiful. God has blessed us tremendously. Like I said, we've got two builders and a lot of willing men to work. Uh, very beautiful uh, by Brazilian standards. Uh, but we didn't go there for a building. Amen. We went there to reach the people of Brazil with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And there is now founded and established in Pozo Alegre a Bible-believing church. Amen. Uh, where little kids, teenagers, <coughs> mothers, and fathers can worship and praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And uh, this young man in the middle, named Vitor, I met him a couple weeks uh, after actually getting to Pozo Alegre. Well, we were, I was actually out doing some visitation, ran into him, I was having problems with my visas at the time, got to know him. Uh, he's an attorney. He was fresh out of law school, same age as, as me. We were both 30 years old. And uh, he <laughs> took a liking to me, started helping me. And it wasn't long before he trusted Jesus Christ as his Savior. And he became the first convert, adult convert, that I had the opportunity to baptize in Brazil. Uh, after that, his wife, Giselle, followed him as well. Had the privilege of baptizing her. Today, Vitor and Giselle both have a young son. His name is Vitor Hugo. And they are members of the Hope Bible Baptist Church of Porto Alegre. Now, this is one of the other first families that God gave us uh, after we were rebuilding with the tin that we had started with. Um, the young man in the dark suit, his name is Guilherme. That is William in English, believe it or not. Guilherme came along. He was 17 years old from a dedicated Catholic family. Walked the aisle on a Sunday night. Trusted Jesus Christ as a Savior. Followed the Lord believers' baptism. I had started a Bible institute. He entered it. And uh, three years later, Brother Guilherme is a preacher in our church. He's also our youth director and uh, a good young man. This is his sister, Simone. She came the same night he did. She's a few years older, trusted Jesus Christ as her Savior. After she got saved, uh, she, uh, she came to me and she said, I've lost all my friends because I left the Catholic Church. And you got to realize both these uh, young people are the only, they're the first people that, are, that, that got saved in their own families uh, from a line of traditional Catholics. And, uh, and she told me, she said, uh, you know, my family's against me. I've lost all my friends. She said, I lost my boyfriend. She said, I'll never get married. That's what she said. And I said, just be patient. Just be patient. God will bring someone. And uh, a couple months later, 
this this young soldier in a white suit walked in the back of our church on a Wednesday night, sat in the back row, <coughs> and two and a half years later, I had the privilege to do Bruno and Simone's wedding. Bruno was a dedicated Catholic. Today, he is a Bible-believing Christian. Uh, he studied in our institute as well. He's still in the institute. He's our song leader, and he's also our visitation leader. This is their grandmother. Her name's Granny Lourges. That's the elderly lady seated in the pink. Now, uh, we are in the redneck capital of Brazil. Okay, I didn't know that when I went there, but I was kind of being guided by that missionary I told you about. And they actually make fun of the way Mineiros, the people of Minas, speak. Uh, the other Brazilians make fun of them because uh, it's, uh, it's, it's like here in the Tennessee or Alabama. <laughs> it's southern talk. In, in Brazil, we would say, uh, você está indo, you are going. But in uh, Minas, they say, se está indo, they cut everything off. And anyway, uh, Brother Guilherme is very redneck. His grandmother is one of the most redneck people I've ever met in my life. When I met Granny Lourdes and went to her house, one of the things that really stood out to me, I walked into her living room, little living room there. She had these trophies. And I asked Guilherme, I said, what are these trophies for? And he said, gambling. I said, what? He said, oh, yeah, she's a card chart, man. <laughs> and she's got to be kidding me. And uh, then I'd go over to her house to visit her, and she wouldn't be there. And I'd, I'd find out later she was down at the river fishing. I uh, found out, too, they took her shotgun away because she was taking pop shots at people coming in. Uh, um, the other thing I, I noticed about Granny Lourdes is she always rolled her own cigarettes. And uh, nobody, I mean, this lady was hardcore. Nobody ever thought she would even show up at church. She ended up coming to our church and visiting. And after a while, she started coming more and more. And one night, she walked the aisle and trusted Jesus Christ as her Savior. She followed the Lord in believer's baptism. She was 62 years old. And actually, uh, when she got saved, I asked her, I said, uh, after she got saved, I said, Granny Lourdes, I call her Vovo Lourdes. I said, would you like to get baptized? She said, no. I said, why not? She said, because I smoke. I said, well, I know that, but that doesn't have anything to do with your salvation. I said, you know, you need to quit, but you need to start serving the Lord. You need to get baptized. She said, no, I can't do that. I said, what do you mean? She said, if I were to get baptized smoking, she said, that'd be a bad testimony. But she said. She said, I'll, I'll wait till the Lord gives me victory over this thing, and then I'll tell you when I'm ready. And a year later, after her standing up on Wednesday, I couldn't believe she would stand up on Wednesday night, raise her hand, and ask prayer that God would help her quit smoking. This was not the Vovo Lourdes that I met. I mean, she was hardcore. Uh, it was funny. Uh, one time we were having a barbecue. Brazilians are big barbecue people. They're not tacos. They're not burritos. They don't even know what those things are. They're into meat and barbecue. And uh, I was over at Brother Guilherme's house. And Vovo Lourdes just pulled out her stuff. She was making a cigarette up, you know. And Brother Guilherme goes, Grandma, what are you doing? She said, what? She said, the preacher's here. She said, I smoke when he's not here. <laughs> and a year later, God gave her victory over smoking, and she got mad. This is her son, Sebastian. This would be Brother Guilherme's father, an alcoholic. Every weekend, Sunday, uh, Saturday through Sunday until Monday when it was time to go back to work, this guy was in the bar, blowing the family's money, and, and Guilherme would have to go there and pull him, bring him, drag him home. Uh, two months after Brother Guilherme got saved, he was able to lead his father to the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, God not only saved him, but liberate, liberated him from alcohol. He hadn't had a drop, thank God. Amen. And uh, he's one of the builders, as a matter of fact, in our church. This is his wife, Joanna. And uh, Joanna, she was the last one in the family to get saved. When I first met her, went over to her house. I was actually starting discipleship studies with Brother Gadami. And I walked in the house, sat down at their table. Brazilians are very hospitable. And the first thing she said to me after she said hello was, Buster Rocktail, she said, I have a lot of respect for you, respect what you're doing. She said, well, I'm Catholic and I'll die Catholic. And they say that in Brazil too. <laughs> yeah. And I said, okay. And uh, I noticed she was just... Very curious, every time I would go over to the house to have a Bible study with Brother Guilherme, she would just kind of hover around, hang around. And next thing I know, she started covering the church. Hey, the Lord saved her husband, and he quit drinking. And that, she had told Guilherme, if I could ever find a church that would get my, uh, that would cure my husband from his drinking, I would go to that church. And, of course, it wasn't the church. It was the Lord Jesus Christ, and she didn't know any better. So she started, out of curiosity, she started coming to our church. And I bet it was a year. That was about a year later, one night on a Sunday night, she walked the aisle and confessed Jesus Christ. Hey. 
And then she came into my office after that, and she uh, she walked in. She said, Pastor Mateo, she said, I, I want you to know that I believe now that the Lord Jesus Christ, he's the only way. I understand that. I understand that Mary is not a mediatrix and all that. She said, I, I'm saved. She said, but I just want you to know I'm not going to get baptized. I said, okay, all right. Well, about six months went by, and next thing I know, uh, we're going to have a baptism. And she comes to me, and she said, I'd like to get baptized. <laughs> okay. Well, we baptized her. After the baptism, she came to me and she, she said, well, she said, now I'm saved. She said, I've been baptized. She said, but I just want you to know, she said, I'm not going to become a member of your church. <laughs> she is now a member, a faithful member of our church and quite a witness as well. This is Leticia. She comes from the city of Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo is about two and a half, three hours away from us. 22 million people in Sao Paulo, the third largest city in the world. And uh, the way she ended up in our neighborhood and coming to our church is her mother died of brain cancer. And when that happened, her, her the family sent her to live with her father. And her father just happens to live in the neighborhood of our church. And uh, she was invited to our church at 13 years old and trusted Jesus Christ as her Savior. And right before I left, after two years, 15, she's 15 now, her Catholic daddy finally let her get baptized. And when, he, when she got baptized, her daddy came to watch it. Amen. And then he had to listen to a preaching sermon after that. Uh, and she told me, she said, with tears in her eyes, she said, you know, when my mama died, she said it was one of the worst things that ever happened to me. She said, but looking back, I can see how the Lord used it to be one of the best things that ever happened to me. And she said, it was through that that I found the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. This is Brother Ricardo, his wife Adriana. Uh, Brother Ricardo has been married before. And uh, he and his, his second wife, now Adriana, they were having problems, marriage problems, looking for towards, uh, headed for another divorce, and they're invited to our church, and they came to our church seeking help, and that night, I just happened to be preaching on hell, and uh, obviously that wasn't the help they, at least the help they thought they were looking for, so when they left that night, later on I found out that they got in the car, and Adriana looked at Ricardo, and she said, listen, she said, if we're going to leave the Catholic Church, okay, she said, but I ain't never coming back to this church. <laughs> They came back. They trusted Jesus Christ as their Savior, followed the Lord, believers' baptism. Uh, man, I'm starting to like when people said, I ain't never going to do that. Anymore. And today, they actually have a ministry in our church that they run for couples that are having marriage problems. And not just for people in the church, they try to use it as an evangelism tool and, uh, and draw some other lost couples in and win them to the Lord. They're very faithful, thank God, for them. This is their grandson. His name's Lucas. Uh, Lucas loves to come to church and uh, with, with Grandpa and Grandma, and he, before services, a lot of times, he'll jump up on the platform and he'll start leading singing, and, you know, the people that are sitting around, and they'll, he'll get a stool and put it by the pulpit and get up and act like he's preaching, and, uh, you know, I've sat there and I've watched that and I've shed tears to see what God can do, amen? Here's a little boy that's going to grow up in a Bible believing in the Baptist church, amen? Because Grandpa and Grandma got saved. Amen. This is Brother Walter, alcoholic, druggy. To this day, when you talk to Walter, you can tell he used way too many drugs before he got saved. I mean, just sometimes in the conversation, there's a blank spot there. <laughs> but he loves the Lord. And uh, he was invited to church by his uh, brother and sister in law, both of whom I had the opportunity to baptize after they trusted Christ as their Savior. And uh, he came. The Sunday night he came, I gave the invitation, he literally ran down the aisle and hit, I mean, hit the altar. And we have granite, we have a granite uh, platform, and he hit that altar and, and just welling and uh, trusted Christ as his Savior. But he's, he was an alcoholic, a drug addict, didn't know how, it would, you know how it would turn out, and sure enough, the Lord liberated him from all that. Amen. He followed the Lord in believer's baptism, and then he told us that he'd been living with this woman off and on, Val. So we sent some ladies from our church to witness to her. And uh, she trusted Jesus Christ as her Savior, followed the Lord in believers' baptism. They started coming to church since then. Both their sons have trusted Jesus Amen. Christ as their Savior, had the privilege of baptizing both of them. And uh, they're members of Hope Bible Baptist Church in Pozole. This is Brother Rafael and Andrea. I went and visited Rafael. His mother asked me to. And I uh, got there. He, he was kind, opened the door, let me in. And I started witnessing to him right off the bat. And uh, he was just very quiet. Just nodding his head the whole time, but he just let me talk, so I kept talking. And got down to the end and kind of gave him an invitation. Said, "Would you like to trust Christ?" He nodded his head, yes. I said, "All right, you bow your head, I'll bow my head, we'll close our eyes, and all that. You pray and ask the Lord to save you." 
And uh, I close my eyes. I'm waiting. Nothing. So finally I look up at him. He's looking at me. I said, all right, go ahead and pray. He said, I did. I said, I didn't hear you. He said, I prayed. I thought this ain't working. <laughs> Missed something here. I thought, but the guy, the guy said he prayed, so what am I gonna do? You know, no, you didn't pray or a liar. You know, it's gotta be out loud. You know, what do you do? So I said, all right, well, uh, you know, come to church. I'm, I'm disappointed. And I, I get up to leave, and he said, would you come back tonight? I said, yeah, I'll come back tonight. He said, Andrea will be off work. Come back and talk to her. He said, I'd like you to talk to her. I went back that night. She trusted Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And then they started showing up at church, and they did our discipleship program, and then they wanted to be baptized. So we baptized them. <clears throat> and then all of a sudden, surprise, surprise, Brother Raphael starts showing up at our Bible Institute. Amen. And three years later, he's a preacher in our church. Amen. One of the best Bible students in our church. Uh, he's right now, he's the teacher for our adult Sunday school class. And uh, Brother Guilherme's going to be going off to another church in the <coughs> south, it looks like. And Brother Raphael will probably end up taking over the youth. Pray about that. He's a good man. Uh, brother, this is Brother Max, Amelia, and Danielle. Brother Max and Amelia, too, the, it, it is the, they're the, one of the most faithful young couples we have. Brother Max of, and is not a full-time institute student, but he's taking some classes. And uh, one of the first things they wanted done when their son was born is they wanted to present him to the Lord Jesus Christ in our church. That was the first couple that... Uh, we actually had that happen with an opportunity like that with a baby being born. It was a real special time for our church because in Catholic Brazil, when a young couple has a baby like that, they always take them to the Catholic church and have a christening. It was a great testimony. Brother Max is 28 years old. Two years ago, our church voted on its first deacon. And uh, Brother Max didn't end up uh, getting the vote, but he was a runner-up at 28 years old. And it shows a testimony of that young man. <laughs> Uh, this family, I could sit here and tell you quite a few stories. God has transformed their lives, our ministry, thank God. But I'd like to focus on this uh, fellow here in the end, Lucas. He's the last one in the family to get saved. I mean, even these little guys have trusted Christ before him. And uh, he came, started coming with a family, and somebody told me, they said, you know, Lucas is a professing atheist. 17 years old. I said, okay. And I didn't, I never, I just, every time I talked with him, never talked to him about that, just said, thanks for coming, or he's, you know, we got these youth programs, you can be involved, and he started coming a little bit, but I noticed every service, he was just, every time he, he would come, he would get more and more under conviction, and one Sunday morning, after service, I uh, found out he wanted to talk to me, so I went to where he was in his pew, I said, hey, Lucas, uh, somebody told me you wanted to talk to me, he said, I, I do, I said, well, what's it about, he said, can we go in your office, I said, okay, and I'm walking in my office, I'm thinking, he probably wants, he's probably got some atheistic argument. He wants to ask me about something. And so I sit down, and he sat down. And I said, Lucas, I said, what can I do for you? He said, well, I just want to know how I can know for sure that I'm going to heaven when I die. And, uh, he asked the Lord Jesus Christ to save him right there. And uh, I had the opportunity to baptize him uh, not too long before we came back on furlough. This is Brother Paulo Silas. Came as a result of our uh, radio ministry. This is uh, Sister Leticia, 21 years old, trusted Jesus Christ as her Savior. This entire family, except for the little girl, has trusted Jesus Christ in our church. And I baptized every one of them except this lady on the end. And the only reason I hadn't baptized her yet is because she got saved the last service uh, we were uh, there. But um, she, this is her son, uh, Ulysses, like Ulysses S. Grant. And um, she was estranged from him. She left her son and her daughter with her with her mother and left them and went off for years. Ulysses and her daughter, and Ulysses and his sister rather, hadn't even seen their mother. And he got saved in our church at 17 years old and started standing up on Wednesday night and asking prayer for his mother. And would you believe a month before we leave for Brazil, she comes home. And when she comes home, she starts coming to our church. And the last night we had service, she walked in on trusted Jesus hey, Christ. Hey, hey. I won't tell you what that did for this young man. <laughs> I can't tell you. It's undescribable. Yeah. Amen. Hey, hey. So, this is Brother Alfrani and his wife Claudette. Now, uh, Brother Alfrani, right before we left the last night again, last service we had, right before uh, he left, he shook my hand and he grabbed me by the arm. He said, I'll tell you what. He said, when you go back to those churches that support you and send you money, 
He said, tell them I said thank you. Hey, hey, sending me a missionary. This is Brother Wellington, his wife, Ty, uh, uh, his wife Vanessa. Brother Wellington is a cop in our church, and uh, we street preach. And when we started it, I wasn't too sure how it was going to go, how the authorities would uh, accept it and everything. And we, we, we street preach in, in the Central Park right in front of the big Catholic Cathedral downtown. Mm -hmm. And we, when we started that, the first Saturday we started that, unbeknownst to Brother Wellington's superiors, and he didn't even really have an idea what street preaching that was at the time. He just he knew what we were going to do. He didn't ask for it or anything. But his superiors put him on duty in that park where we street preach. And uh, so the cop on duty was him. He's a he's a corporal. And then he had his uh, his uh, another guy there who's a superior to him. His uh, his assistant. Those were the two cops on duty for the first year that we street preached in Pozole. So we never had any trouble from the cops, amen? Because every time somebody had a complaint, they would find him and they would complain and he would sit there as a good cop and smile, and yes, and listen, and then they would walk off and he would do absolutely nothing. <laughs> That's the Lord, amen? That's the Lord. This is Brother Genesis, his wife Lourdes. Brother Alvaro, his wife Andrea. Abner, Brother Alvaro is our church secretary. Uh, he also uh, runs a ministry, a Chick Publications Ministry. We've been given the authorization by Chick Publications to print Chick Tracks in Brazil. And uh, we currently print four different titles. And he's actually looking. There's 59 other titles already uh, Chick Tracks, uh, 59 Chick Tracks with other stories in Portuguese already that are now out of print. And what he wants to do is bring them back in print. And he's working on that right now. Um, we're getting ready to print 12,000 more tracks uh, if the Lord will bless. Amen. This is Brother uh, Felipe and Luis Gustavo, both of them trusted Jesus Christ in our church. Now, Brazil's a big soccer country. I hate soccer. I love American football. And, uh, man, that was one of the hardest things going to Brazil. I thought, what am I going to do? You know? Not get into this, and, but I wanted to, you know, fit into the culture. So I started playing with them, and it wasn't long before they were like, "Mr. Martinez, uh, you don't want to play, do you?" And the reason for that was I kept hitting people <laughs> without wanting to, you know, because soccer is all about the ball, football is all about the body, <laughs> and without even wanting to, I was hitting them. And really, I realized myself that this was not going to work. You can't pastor people and hurt them, <laughs> and so I stopped. Well, uh, Brother Felipe came to me and he said, uh, hey, you mentioned you played uh, football in America. I said, yeah, yeah. He said, uh, we're starting a team here in town. I said, really? He said, yeah, well, come out and help us. I said, I ain't got time. Well, they kept, they stayed on me, stayed on me until finally I went out and uh, started. Uh, that's a big thing right now among the young, some of the young men in Brazil's American football. And they're importing all their equipment from the States. And we started, they started forming a team. I started helping, mixing it up, playing with them, having a good time. And uh, you'll notice that in this picture, Brother Felipe's hand is broken. That's because he plays middle linebacker. And he stuck it between two helmets and a tackle and broke his hand. And uh, we've actually had five guys get saved on that team. Amen. All together. So that's a, that's a side ministry there that God's given us. Amen. Amen. This is Sister Hosanetch, uh, uh, her son Allison, Jill Zachy. Sister Hosanet brought, of course, her son, and he trusted Christ, and brought Jill, Jill Zatchi, she, she trusted Christ. Sister Clagey, her, her daughter, Vicky Tadia, Sinji, the only one that's not saved in this family yet is Daddy, very harsh, hard Catholic, and witness to him, he hasn't trusted Christ yet as his Savior. Brother Marcelo, his wife, Taiza, this is my barber in Brazil. I don't know if you should trust a bald guy to cut your hair. <laughs> Came. I had the opportunity to baptize him as well after he trusted Christ as his Savior. This is Billy Cardo. Brother Ricardo trusted Jesus Christ at 58 years old. His wife, Fatima, Brother Fernando. Brother Fernando is 33 years old. He's had 13 surgeries on his head for brain tumor. But he knows he's going to heaven when he dies. Amen. Amen. Brother Ricardo is getting baptized. His sister, Gabi, or, wife, or, or mother, Marcia. And uh, Giovanna, matter of fact, Daddy just got in. Since we've been in, uh, in the States, Daddy just got in as well. And that's a blessing. Brother O'Neill, his wife, Elena. Brother Macias. Brother Marcio and his wife, Sarah Lady. 
And Brother Marshu is a rancher in a small ranch outside of town. Uh, and uh, actually, he's now known in our town as Marshu the Believer. Uh, I found that out. He didn't tell me that. I found that out. I went to a feed store to buy some feed one time. And I'm telling him about Marshu because he had told me to go there and buy this feed. And the guy kept looking at me strange because there's a lot of Marshus in Brazil. It's like saying Bob, you know. And uh, finally he goes, oh, you mean Marshu Crenci, Marshu the Believer. I said, is that what he's called? He said, yeah, everybody knows him. He lives over there at the end. And I was like, what a testimony. Yeah. <laughs> I wish somebody would call me Matt the Believer. <laughs> and uh, his wife, Sir Lenny. This lady is an amazing soul winner. She's one of the best soul winners I have ever met in my life. Yeah, a couple weeks before we came back to the state, she got up on a Wednesday night and gave this testimony. She said, today I was out working. She caters food. And she said, the place I was working, they were doing some remodeling, and there was a young man up on a ladder painting. And uh, she said, as I walked by, the Lord impressed it on my heart to witness to this guy. And she's one of those people, when the Lord impresses it on her heart, she does it. She's not like us, don't come up with excuses, you know. And so she said, I started, she's real short, she's not this tall. She said, um, I started trying to witness to him. Hey, you know, she yelled up there, she's talking to him, and he's like, what? What? I don't understand. And, and she said, she noticed that his truck was parked right there by the ladder. So she asked him, she said, can I get in your truck? He's like, okay. He's probably thinking, man, this lady's got something to tell me. So she got in the bed of the truck and realized she still wasn't tall enough, so she climbs on the cab of the truck. I can imagine what this guy's thinking because Brazilians, they don't have, uh, the cars aren't, uh, you know, they're very expensive over there. Not everybody has one. And they baby those things. I mean, they treat. So she climbs up on the cab with this thing. And now she's up high enough to, to talk to him. So she, she starts telling him, she says, I just wanted to tell you about the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know for sure if he died, you'd go to heaven? And they, obviously he said he wasn't sure. So she continued to witness to him. And before it was over, he got off the ladder and trusted Jesus Christ as a savior. The other thing this lady will do is when she finds out there's a Catholic woman in our services, if that lady doesn't come down and get saved, she's, got, she's in trouble. <laughs> because Sister Serlini will meet her at the back door and grab her by the arm and say, are you sure? And I've seen her many a time with tears in her eyes say, are you sure you don't want to trust the Lord Jesus Christ as your savior? And I've seen her take those ladies and bring them right back down to the altar. And while everybody's fellowship, and she's leading somebody to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, uh, she led this lady, Jisvanya, to the Lord. And uh, Jisvanya actually actually did come in the invitation. And I called Sir Lenny. Sir Lenny came up and dealt with her. And uh, Jisvanya is a psychiatrist by trade. Her husband, Flavio, is a pharmacist. Now, tell me that ain't a racket. <laughs> Um, but uh, both dedicated Catholics, very dedicated Catholics, before they got saved. Jismani trusted Christ, then she went home and told Flavio, you got to come to this church. I met a man who told me all that I'd ever done. <laughs> the Lord Jesus Christ brought him here, and, and for a month he came. And it was the wildest thing. Now, like I said, they're Catholic, Catholic. And I came on a Wednesday night, I was teaching the book of Acts, and after I got done... Standing at the back door shaking hands, he came up to me and he said, Congratulations. And I said, Okay. He said, This is the greatest church I've ever been in. And I said, Well, amen. He said, You guys teach the Bible. <laughs> and I said, Yeah, we do. And, and he started, he kept coming back, kept coming back. And you know, uh, none of the people in the church, it's kind of the way it is in, in Brazil because of Catholicism. It, it, it takes a while for someone to get saved usually. They don't usually get saved the first time they come. So the people in the church, because they're ex-Catholics, they kind of know how it works. Other than Sir Lenny, she's kind of pushy. But <laughs> a lot of people give you some room. And uh, he just kept coming back. And the Lord was working on his heart, working on his heart. We knew the Lord was working on his heart. People would try to witness to him a little bit here and there. But just let the Lord deal with him. On a, on a Wednesday night, after a month of coming to church, they came. They were coming more than some of our members. It was a Wednesday night, and we spread out across the congregation to pray. We usually pray uh, two by two, two, a man with a man, one with a woman. We just break up all over the congregation, and everybody prays. It's a beautiful sound. You hear the saints praying, and the prayers going up on Wednesday night. And uh, afterwards, I found out what happened during the prayer meeting. Brother uh, Fabio was with two of the men of our church, Brother Edward and Brother Guilherme, and they're all praying. And uh, Brother Edward and Brother Guilherme gave testimony that right in the middle of that thing, Brother Flavio said, stop. 
And they both stopped and looked at him, and they said his face was red, he had tears running down his cheeks, and he said, I just wanted you guys to know that I just trusted Jesus Christ hey. to save my soul from hell. Amen. And so Brother Flavio trusted Christ as his Savior. Their son Lucas, five years old, they used to have an altar in his room dedicated to the Virgin Mary. And it's not there anymore. Amen. Now, Brother Flavio, since he's trusted Christ, and since we have been in the States, he's led his father, his mother, and his uncle to the Lord Jesus Christ. His wife and his, his in-laws didn't even get along before they got saved. Now his in-laws got saved, and now they get along. Amen? And, uh, man, some in-laws do have to get saved before you get along. <laughs> but, uh, Sister Gisvania, the night she got baptized, Brother Donovan was in our church over there in Brazil, Brian Donovan from Bible Baptist Church, Pensacola. And uh, after she got baptized, I had Brother Donovan preach. We had uh, 16 people baptized that night. And uh, well, after he, when he gave the invitation, that night we had seven Roman Catholics all over the age 40 walk down and trust Jesus Christ. Amen. And uh, Gisvania's mother was one of them. And while I'll never forget it, she's walking down the aisle, she's got this big pendulum on her, you know, necklace on her chest. It's of the Virgin Mary. She's coming down to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as her Savior. Amen. Yeah, this is Diogenes. Man, I love him. I love this guy. I love this story. Um, you know, you can't make this stuff up. Two days after I get to Pozo Alegre, going around town, and I was actually trying to send. We didn't have internet in our house, and so I had to go to this place where they had internet access, and I wanted to send an email to my dad. And I had a problem there on the computer where I was trying to do this, and I was trying to talk to the guy that owned the place, and Portuguese wasn't good. I mean, it wasn't good. I hardly knew anything. You know, only been there a couple of days. And this guy's there, and he comes up, and he, he, he slapped me on the arm. He said, uh, hey, man, can I help you? I looked at him, and I said, are you American? He said, no, man, I'm just a Brazilian redneck. <laughs> I said, wow, I didn't know they had those. I said, yeah, man, yeah. I said, this is wild. I said, man, your English is good. He said, thank you. He said, thanks. I appreciate it. I said, how did you learn English? I said, who taught you English? You got a southern accent. He said, I know. I said, well, how did you learn English? He said, you won't believe it. I said, well, try me. He said, country music. <laughs> and that's the truth. He told me. He sat down. <laughs> down with a cassette player back then, an English dictionary and a Portuguese dictionary, and he would write down what he was hearing, check it with a with an English dictionary to try and get the word right, and then look at the Portuguese dictionary so he could understand it. And a guy plays a guitar like he's a good guitar player, plays bluegrass. I mean, he listens to all of it. The guy can play even before he got saved. He played uh, old rugged. He would come to my house for six years. I witnessed to this guy. He's a spiritist, and uh, he wouldn't trust Christ, or he was a spiritist, wouldn't trust Christ as a Savior, but he would come, and I'd witness to him, witness to him, and he just wasn't responding, so he'd come over, <coughs> he'd sit on my couch, and he'd play these, these hymns, because he knew that we were Christians, he would play, and he would sing, on a hill far away, <laughs> So then it hit me, well, if he's not responding to anything, just start using the song, the words of the song. Yeah. And so I asked him, so you know, those, the, you know what these words mean? And on a hill far away, stood an old rugged cross, and I start preaching the Lord Jesus Christ to him. And he starts crying. And I'm thinking, he's going to get saved. But he wouldn't get saved. For six years, he wouldn't get saved. Last, he came to our church twice, okay? And uh, he actually came three times. The last time he came was the last service we had over there. He knew it would be our last service, and he... He wanted to come and say goodbye to me, and he knew it would be a while before we saw each other again. So he walked in. I was already at the podium. He walked in the back door, sat at the second row to the back. We have three three sets of pews, you know, and he sits, sits on this side, side about two rows back, or two rows to the back. And uh, I thought, man, this is my chance, man. So I started preaching, and it was like, it was just me and him, you know, and preaching, preaching, preaching. And I gave the invitation, and he stood up like that, walked the aisle, trusted Jesus Christ. Yes. Hey. Hey. So thank God for that. His, uh, this, his buddy of his, Brother Douglas, uh, by the way, Brother Diogenes does, plays on our football team. This guy does too as well, Douglas. 
and I've been witness to him and trying to get him to come, and he wouldn't come, but he finally came because he knew it was my last service, and he sat back there, and he listened to the preaching the entire time. I could just see the Lord working in his heart, and he walked the aisle right behind Brother Diogenes and trusted Jesus Christ as his Savior. And we had some other people from the team there that night that were under conviction that didn't trust the Lord, but are praying that before it's over, they will. This is Brother Eduardo. He is the guy that's pastoring the church. He was actually the guy that was voted in by our church as a, as, a, as the deacon of the church. So he went from deacon to Matthew's now pastoring the church. And uh, his family there, he was ordained in our church, studied in our Bible Institute. Uh, good man, spiritual discernment, and loves the Lord. Please pray for him. God has given us good men. Again, this is Brother Alvaro, our church secretary. This is Brother Eduardo, the guy that's pastor in the church now. Brother Marcio, head trustee. And uh, God, beside the older men God's given us, God's given us some good young men. In 2009, started our Bible Institute with these three guys. And the Lord's given us more young men. Amen. And I love young men. And that's what our, our focus is. we got a, a small Bible Institute over there. We had about eight full-time students last year. Uh, one of those was actually a young girl. And we had 11 students all together. And we get them out. We get them street preaching. This fellow right here, he's 17 now. He was actually 15 in that picture. Preaching the gospel for the other day. Brother Guilherme, his daddy, Sebastian. You've already heard about them. Brother Raphael, a guy who wouldn't even pray out loud to get saved, is now street preaching. And he, he not only street preaches, he is the leader of the street preaching now. He's the guy that heads it up. This is Brother Bruno. Again, our song leader mentioned him in the beginning. Brother Bruno is one of those guys that now that he's saved, he is, for lack of a better term, ticked off at the Catholic Church. Okay? And i got to be so careful with this guy. I mean, he is a bomb just ready to explode. And uh, one day we're out doing some you know, public evangelism. Next thing I know, boom, he's gone. And he was supposed to be my partner. passing out tracks. I went, where did he go? And then I see him walking out of the Catholic Church. And I notice that he has a big smile on his face. And I'm nervous. Oh, man.